Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's use what we've learned on some operational amplifier circuits. Here's our first example. What we're trying to find is we're trying to find the output voltage. We're given the input voltage, but notice we're in the time domain. So the input voltage is three times the cosine of a thousand T. That means omega, the frequency, is a thousand. And of course, if we want to convert to the frequency domain, then of course we have to take the capacitors and change them into what their reactive uh, uh, capacitive reactance is equal to. I was looking for the word there. Okay, there a couple things we should remember with operational amplifiers. Notice that the voltage difference between the negative and the positive terminals here is essentially zero. So we can just assume them to be zero. And that the currents in and out of the two terminals right here of the operational amplifier is also essentially zero. Once we use that as a, as a guide, it's a lot easier to work with the circuits. Notice we have two main junctions. Let's say that the voltage at this point is V1 and the voltage at this point, well, let's at this point call it V2. We'll do the same over here. The voltage over here would be V1 and the voltage over here would be V2. Notice at those two junctions, on the first junction, we have one current going in from the source, we'll call that I1, and three currents leaving, I2, I3, and I4. On the second junction, we have I3 entering, and we call it I5 leaving through the capacitor. There's essentially no current in this branch, so we can simply call that zero current. So we're using the Kirchhoff current rules at every junction that the current entering the junction must equal to sum the currents leaving. The current entering must equal the current leaving. So we're going to use that to come up with an equation to find ultimately the output voltage of the operational amplifier. All right, how do we do that? Current I1, that's going to be the voltage difference divided by the resistance. In this case, it would be the voltage of the source, V of the source, minus V1. We don't know yet what V1 is, and we divide that by the resistance, which is 10K, and that must equal the sum of the three currents here. I2, that's the current going up this way, so what we need is we need the voltage difference between V1 and V output, and then we divide that by the resistance. So we have V1 minus V out, divided by the resistance, which in this case is 20K, plus I3, that would be V1 minus V2. But notice V2 is connected to the negative terminal, and we realize that the voltage difference here is essentially zero, and the positive terminal is connected to ground. So that means that V2 must also be equal to zero. So we can just put that in here, V2 equals zero, which means that this will simply be V1 minus zero divided by the resistance in between, which is 10K. And then we add that to I4. I4 is the current going this way. That'll be the dif difference between V1 and ground. So that would be V1 minus zero divided by minus J5K. All right, that gives us our first equation. Now we go to our second junction here. I3, of course, will be the same as I3 over here. That's this one right here, which is V1 minus V2, but V2 is zero. So V1 minus zero divided by the resistance, 10K, and that must equal, uh, let's see here, the current going up this way, so that's V2, which is zero, minus V0, V out, so that would be zero minus V out, divided by the impedance right there, which would be a minus J10K. All right, now notice that on the right side here, we have a relation between V1 and V out. Also, we can multiply both sides by 10K. If we do that, multiply the left side and the right side by 10K, then the equation becomes V1 divided by one equals a negative VO divided by a negative, hmm. started V2 was zero minus, the current is going that way, so zero minus that, that is correct. So minus V0 divided by minus J1. Okay, so good. I gotta be careful with the negative signs. So it looks like these two negative signs cancel out. But now I'm going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by J. So in the denominator I end up with the J squared, which is negative. 
So that means that V1 equals negative JV0. And there's my relationship between the two. So in other words, to get rid of V1, I simply have to replace it by the negative JV0. So really be careful with the negative signs. So let's clean this up a little bit and then make that substitution. So here we have V source. Now the source voltage is 3. So we can plug that in here. So we have 3 minus V1. Oh, first of all, you know what? Before we do that, let's do the same thing as we did on the right side. Let's multiply everything by 20K to get rid of those denominators. So let's do that. All right, so the left side and the right side, let's multiply by 20K. And let's do the same over here, 20K. And if we do that, we end up with 2V source minus 2V1 equals V1 minus V0. Over here, we get plus 2V1. And over here we get, uh, we still have the minus j in the denominator, so we'll leave that there for now. Uh, so we have 4, so plus, well, we'll bring the negative over this way. So negative 4v1 divided by j. So I brought the negative to the numerator, multiply times 4, and I have a j here. But if I multiply times j and divide by j, then this becomes j squared, which is a negative one. That cancels out this negative one, so this becomes positive when I get rid of that and end up with a minus or a plus 4jv1. All right, so far so good. So what I'm going to do now is move, first of all, the source voltage is 3, so 2 times 3 gives me 6. And I have a minus V0 here, I'm bringing that to the left, that becomes plus V0 equals. I'm moving all the V1s to the right side. When I bring this across, it becomes a plus 2V1, plus 3V1, plus 5V1. So that would be plus 5V1, and I have a plus 4JV1, plus 4JV1, which... I can factor out a V1, so this becomes 6 plus V0 equals the quantity 5 plus J4 V1. And now notice that V1 is equal to this. So now we can make the substitution. So I can write 6 plus V0 equals, or V out equals, 5 plus J4. Multiply times V1, but V1 is a negative J V0. All right, multiplying out the right side. So I have a j times a j, that's a negative one times a negative is a positive one, so 4v0, 4v0, I'll just separate it like that, and I have a five minus j, that's a minus j5, so minus j5v0, or simply four minus j5v0, either way. Okay, notice I'm trying to find V0. So I move all the V0s to the left side. So let me come up here and finish up. So um, I end up with V0 on the left, and then 4, 4V0, four that goes to the left, so minus 4V0, and a minus J5, that becomes a plus J5V0 equals a negative 6. All right, so when I combine all this, I have V0 times a negative 3, a negative 4 plus 1, that's a negative 3, plus J5 equals a negative 6. Multiplying everything by a negative 1 to make that positive, so we have V0 times 3, that becomes now a minus J5, minus j5 equals a positive 6 and so I get v0 is equal to 6 divided by 3 minus j5 and of course now I have to change that into the magnitude phase angle format so I have 25 plus 9 take the square root 5.83 so we have v0 equals 6 with a phase angle of 0 degrees divided by 5.83 with a phase angle of 5 divided by 3 tangent that's a negative 
Oh, that's not correct. 5 divided by 3, take the inverse tangent. That's a negative 59.036. Negative 59.036 degrees. So now, V0 is equal to, when I make the division, I get 6 divided by 5.83, which is 1.029, 1.029, with a phase angle of a positive 59.036 degrees. Now that, of course, is the answer in the frequency domain, but now we want to go back and get the answer in the time domain. So that means that the output voltage is equal to the amplitude, 1.029 times the cosine, times the cosine of omega t, which is 1000 t, plus the phase angle, plus 59.036 degrees, that's in volts. And there you go, that is now the output voltage of the operational amplifier in the time domain. This, of course, is the output voltage in the frequency domain. And so that's how we use the same principles that we used before, but on an operational amplifier circuit to find the output voltage. And that is how it's done. <laughs> and I think it's correct. <laughs> Let's see here. Look at that. It is correct. Well, it's easy to make a single mistake somewhere, right? A simple slip up somewhere, negative sign slip up can be easily done, but yeah, that's how we do it.